He has a 1-1 count. That one struck high. Left side. That one's going. That's right here off the side. You have to be kidding me. It's a Monday. I'm here. Andrew's here. That means just one thing. We've got rankings coming your way. This video is specifically class 3A. Hey, be sure to go check out the other rankings. Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're grinding these out right now. Get these out Monday. Excited for you guys to have these for free all year long. We appreciate you tuning in. We just ask, drop a like, drop a sub, share with a friend. Do what you got to do. Help us out. We appreciate all the support so far. Our socials have just been popping off, and it's all thanks to you guys and the incredible athletes across the state of Iowa. That makes our jobs really, really easy. But hey, Andrew, the rankings are not easy. You got to pick and choose different teams. So we're going to see how our Class 3A ranker divvied up things this week inside our top 15 as we get right into it. Hey, before we hop into here, though, our honorable mention teams for class 3A this week, our 3A ranker is one of the rankers that gives us those. Honorable mention, here you go. Pella, Creston, Centerpoint Urbana, Benton, ADM, Sadell, and Ballard. Oh, as, as Siri's talking to me on my watch. If you didn't catch those, <laughs> Benton, ADM, Sadell, and Ballard. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. But hey, those are your honorable mention teams. Teams looking outside the bubble, looking into the teams in the top 15, ready to pounce and take over someone's spot. But as you can see, we got uh, two new teams this week in Class 3A. They're both sitting inside this 15 through 11 spot. Andrew, you've talked about Boone a lot. You saw them in person on the live stream. Hey, if you didn't, if you didn't check, you can go watch those live streams. You can go watch them back on our YouTube if if you played or, or you're a parent or whatnot. But hey, Andrew, you talked and you liked Boone. What what, what was it like? I I liked their offense before the season started. I agree with the ranker here, put, getting them into the top 15 because. You know, it, they had thrilling wins over ADM, over Ballard as we were there again. Ogden, they won there. I mean, they have vaulted themselves for a reason. They blasted their way into the top 10 with, uh, again, top 10 in slugging, RBI, and home runs. So this is a team that's kind of going to live or die by the offense, how it goes. And, you know, we saw that in the 12-11 to 11 shootout win over Ballard. But the fact that they can go ahead and beat a ranked foe, two ranked foes, in the, in the same week, and they do so against conference teams nonetheless, I think that uh, this is going to be an offense that will take them far, or uh, or it won't. But I think Boone is on the right track. Coach Eastland is, uh, has done a great job with this squad. You know, Noah Davies, is we, he, we already mentioned him in our, in our list. He was a standout last year as a freshman, I believe and uh sophomore standout as well he is uh, absolutely huge and he's a guy that honestly he's a guy that could have benefited from the old recruiting rules and he would have been recruited already if the if those rules weren't in place the, as they are now but gosh boone is boone's the team to watch and it's up to them how far they go i truly believe because their offense is is definitely one of the top 10 if not top five offense in 3a Absolutely. Kind of switching out Raccoon River teams we did to start the year. ADM and, and Ballard kind of take out, step out of the rankings. You slot Boone and Bondurant in that Raccoon River. The teams just kind of beat up on each other all year long. I'm sure they'll be yeah. switching every single week in Class 3 as far as that conference goes. But hey, other movement inside our 15 through 11 little sub subsection here. Spencer joins the rankings off after a 2-1 and one week. And then we got Knoxville, Xavier, and Lewis Central all drop in a few spots uh, our ranker even says here in these in these in these descriptions that it's not more about what they did it's more about teams kind of jumping them early season losses are going to be taken a little more harshly than than later season losses but hey that's your 15 through 11 let's get right into 10 through 6 in class 
through A, where we've got even more movement. Uh, Solon at number six, Heal at number seven, Central DeWitt at number eight. They drop because they've only played one or two games, I believe. Uh, Assumption yeah. Assumption drops four spots down to number nine, and then Bonnerant Farrar slots into the top ten. I've had uh, a ton of fun following Bonnerant Farrar. Uh, big win over Ballard last week. Uh, Coach Duva is, is rolling early. Andrew, what kind of sticks out to you in this little six through ten slot? Man, I, I mean, so much here, and I love I love how the movement kind of went, but uh, 6 through 10, I'm going to start out with Bishop Heelan. And Bishop Heelan has been a team that went up against two ranked, two 4A foes, I should say, uh, and they took them down both in doubleheaders. This is a team that's top five in strikeouts across 3A. You know, Caleb LaFlavor and Jaron Bleeker are going to be I think arguably the best, if not one of the best, one-two combos in 3A. And I will say one of the best because obviously what we saw this over the weekend here with North Polk, and, and we've talked about it before, and Cook and Roggy, you know, but I got to say on the on, on the western side of the state, I will say that uh, Bleeker and LeFevre and, other, and others, I mean, they, they really, I think, make it one of the hardest – one, two punches and uh, one of the best pitching staffs on that side of the state. So uh, again, I would argue across the state as well. This is a team that's hitting the ball well and they're, they're seeing the ball well and they've on to the base pass. They're a fun team to watch. So uh, they've got a lot of guys who are hit, hitting the next level coming up here in the next couple of years. And, and we're seeing that uh, Bishop Heelan's routinely been a strong program, but I think they're exceeding, even the, the high expectations that were set for them prior. Uh, they did lose a tough one to Harlan, but Harlan's one of those teams that's going to be hard to beat regardless. So I think that if you're high on Bishop Heelan, you did you have the right to be, and they are trajecting upwards as one of the best teams, I believe, one of the higher jump teams of this entire, of this entire slate here this week. Yeah, I mean, not counting the the new teams, uh, Heelan made did make the biggest jump of teams that moved inside the rankings. So you you are correct there. Uh, you also talk about Solon. You always love the teams that go out and are aggressive on the base pass. And I mean, that's that's what the Spartans did last week. Four and zero sweep over Independence, win over Cascade in Washington. Anything anything quick you like early in the season on Solon? I mean, you mentioned you know they're, they're seven and three A in hits, and once again top ten in stolen bases. And uh, Coach McSweeney, I, I've talked to him, and he was very high on a lot of the underclassmen that he has. Nolan Segrin, he was the team's leading hits leader last year and one of the top RBI markers and total base guys. So he is, he's a guy that's going to be fun to look at as we go forward. But uh, I, the Spartans, they're playing, the, they're playing a, a pretty good schedule. And I think that, again, I, I think this is one of those teams that as long as they continue with what they've got in the Womack, there's not going to be a lot of ways in which they themselves or other teams, I should say, take them out. It's they who will be driving where they go. And if they keep winning, I don't see how they can how they cannot keep traveling up the, la the ladder here. Absolutely. Let's get into our top five as we move along. It is Waller Catholic uh, taking a little bit of a dive. I mean, Andrew, I mean, our, our description says it right here. Their schedule allows for for like little room for error. And uh, uh, I mean, they got swept by Prairie, uh, not panic time at all though, for the golden Eagles. No, no. I, again, their, their schedule, why? I mean, it, it, it provides a lot. Yeah. You don't have a lot of room to make mistakes here, but on the other end of that, you lose to a team like Prairie, who's been pretty hot as of late. Uh, you lose to these squads and their, their schedule. I mean, they're, there will be such things as good losses. Losses are never great or never good, but if you had to rank them over good loss versus bad loss, you're going to see so many on their schedule that's that are good losses because you're going up routinely against teams who will put up pitchers with hitting high 80s, 90s. So you're going to get that. Plus, the teams are always going to be at good depth. So, Waller, I, yeah, it's just, you know, the losses do count for something even if they're against good teams. And I think that a lot of it had to do with teams above them doing so well. But uh, again, I think Wallert is clearly a team that's going to be planted inside the top five going forward. Absolutely. We do have a new team inside our top five this week. 
in Class 3A, and that is Harlan in the Cyclones. You talk about them. Big win over Healing. They've also got wins over ADM, a sweep over Sioux City North, a win over Lamars, and their only scratch so far is against Dallas Cinegrams, who's proven to be one of the hottest teams in Class 4A. Andrew Harlan, I mean, uh, I mean, I can't say we're surprised because it's their second week in a row making a leap in our rankings, but uh, what have you seen so far from the Cyclones? Well, they've had three games against 4A opponents, three games against 3A opponents, and they still come out with a positive 3.0 run differential. I, I like what they're doing, and it shows that they can win the big games on the road. I mean, traveling to Helan to take on the Crusaders, uh, that's a long drive. And they still came out with the win, so it does show that they're not af- that they're not afraid to take on anybody anywhere at any time. And so, uh, by the way, they did that on a turf field. I don't know. I believe Harlan still plays on grass field, if I'm not I, mistaken. I think you're so, right. Yeah, I mean the the fact that you go to a field that I don't think they play a ton on turf fields. They and it, they seem to take it well, you know. So ultimately, yeah, I think Harlan did a did a fairly good job. And I, you know, you take down what a lot of people view as a huge Bishop Heelan team, you do you do get vaulted in the rankings. So I agree with that. Absolutely, another team making a rise inside the top five. It's North Polk, and uh, I mean, it's really hard not to move this team up after what we saw last week. They've tested themselves early. Uh, their two losses so far are to Waukee Northwest and Ankeny Centennial, two teams they're not going to have to worry about come postseason time. But, I mean, the standout for, for me for North Polk, obviously, was Reese Raggi, uh, six and two-thirds, no hit against Ankeny. He looked incredible. We already knew that, though. We already knew he was incredible. It was just more him going out and doing it. But, now a big week for North Polk here this week. ADM, Bonrant, Farrar, Gilbert. Uh, I mean, the Raccoon River slate's going to be given for the Comets. Uh, but but they're really locked and loaded and, and ready to compete for for a conference title, don't you think? Oh yeah, I mean they're they're right now averaging over five strikeouts per game, and that's low for them. Just think about that five strikeouts game low for them. I mean, yeah, I I think they're going to make it there. Their offense showed when we saw them against Ankeny, their offense can hit. Their offense can find the ways from bunting from small ball to more. They have a variety of ways to hurt you. I like North Polk. I think they they're a top three team, and I don't. I again, they're a team that they've already played enough teams, enough really good teams. They're the only team that will take themselves out of the top three, in my estimation. Absolutely. Moving on to our number two ranked team, we got no movement between two and one. Washington Dubuque. They've had to deal with a lot of postponements. I'll say. Uh, yeah. They've been battling that a lot. But a big week this week as tomorrow, if you're watching this on Monday, well, I guess 528, if, whenever you're watching it, they've got Kennedy in a doubleheader. Boy, oh boy, that is going to be incredible. <laughs> I know I've got, there's a lot of good games I'm trying to decide. I know Dowling and Centennial with the big pitching matchup tomorrow, but it's going to be hard for me not to say, hey, I want to go to Kennedy and I want to see these two teams clash because these are two teams that you won't see clash come postseason. So it's always fun to see these. They've also got City High. Uh, in a big double header this week, Andrew. What what makes you uh, positive that this Western Dubuque team can come out and compete with two of the top Class Four A teams? Well, and honestly, as as you look here, I don't believe, and I'd have to check. I'm, I'm checking the stats. I don't believe that this team has a home run so far on the season, uh, offensively. As I as I'm just trying to make my way through and check, I don't believe. So they they have found a way to be effective without hitting the long ball very much. And they found a way to be effective in a lot of areas. Again, we, we mentioned three, three players from last year that were top 10 and I believe hits and total bases come back. And obviously in Harris, Goodman, Quagliano, those guys are, got, are really kind of leading that charge. And I, I, what really brings me a lot of confidence with this Western Dubuque team is that you, you talked about the schedule. Look at who they face. And, you know, they the slate that they've got will really will really charge them. I mean, beyond what this week has, they're also going to take on Linmar, Iowa City Liberty, Cedar Falls. I mean, and they're all in double headers, right? And, you know, anywhere from Iowa City West to Xavier, Prairie again. So, again, a lot of that's within conference, but I'm confident – because this team is already, yes, a lot of postponements. So, 
you know, but they did they did battle well against Pleasant Valley. They took Beck, Beckman Catholic to the fence. So I know I, I like what they're doing there. They're well coached and uh, there's no way that I think that they're going to come out unless they drop pretty much every game this week. Absolutely. Well, Western Dubuque at two means we've got one team left. Number one, it is Marion. They hold that spot after just flexing their muscles on on some on some teams they kind of beat up on this week. Looking at their week, Makoka in a doubleheader, West Delaware in a doubleheader, and West Liberty in a doubleheader. So another another good opportunity for Marion to kind of uh, show off that number one spot by their name. Andrew, uh, w- what makes you uh, optimistic that this Marion team could be the guys holding the trophy at the end of the year in Class Three A? Well, they've sh- they've shown a lot of what one A team or number one teams, I should say, do right. They they've shown that they can go against some of those teams that are kind of finding their way yet, and they can go out and put twenty runs up on the board. And they still have a lot to like. I mean, ultimately, yes, they've had some easier some easier opponents, but uh, what do we see from them? They are already one of two teams in all three A to hit over. 100 total bases and you know they're they have a lot of guys and still some yet to come back from injury that are very impactful so i think that until they prove themselves otherwise and i agree here not a ton of volume for them this week ultimately what they did with that with those few games was they dominated so for me yes other teams did well but it's hard for me to hard for me to look at it and hard for a ranker to put uh, anybody else ahead of them because they've been they've been just doing what number one teams do. So I think it's going to be tough for for teams to dethrone them. But you know those two teams right behind them are inches away, right? They're not feet or miles or uh, however away. They are inches away. So I think that it's going to be a really top battle and interesting to see as we go through one through three uh, in the next coming weeks. Absolutely. Hey, another another full week of movement in Class 3A rankings. 13 of the 15 slots saw a different name uh, this week, and, and I'm sure that trend is going to continue in Class 3A as we sift out uh, a really fun group of teams, and uh, you know we're excited to follow them down the road. Hey, thank you guys, Class 3A fans, or any fans for tuning in to our Class 3A rankings. Go ahead and uh, drop a like, sub, uh, comment where you're watching from, comment who your squad is, someone someone we missed, someone who deserved to be in the rankings. But uh, we appreciate you for tuning in. Again, this is our special edition of High and Tight. Go check out the other rankings videos. And Class 3A fans, we will see you next Monday.